Welcome to the Sports Scouting Report Podcast with Lee Brickeen. Hi, everyone. You're listening to the Sports Scouting Report. I'm your host, Lee Burkeen. Our guest today is from a, a town that is a coastal town on the bayou. A lot of famous people have come from this school. We're going to talk about how it became the name it is now, South Lafouche, the Tarpons. And um, we're going to talk about the history of South Lafouche. We're going to talk about the players coming up, the recruits, the recruits that came out of there over the years, the players that have played in the NFL from this school, a lot of history. And we've got their head coach on today, Coach Brian B.J. Young. Brian, thanks for joining us. Hey, man. Uh, my pleasure to be here. I'm glad you're, glad you're able to get me on. Brian, I, I remember when you were at Hanville, you were in our magazine. You were a quarterback. And, man, you were like the, the top one of the top quarterbacks in the state. You know, tall, had a cannon arm. Time has flown, Brian. I'm getting old, man. And then you signed with Southeastern. And then we did an article on you when you were at Southeastern with Louisiana Football Magazine. You did a good job at Southeastern. And now you're a high school coach. And, I'm, and I look back and I go, man, I'm getting so old. This guy, it's like yesterday that you were in high school, that we promoted you. Right. What's it feel like being a high school coach? Did you ever think, hey, when I'm playing high school ball at Hanville as a quarterback, I'm going to be a high school coach one day? <laughs> yeah, man. It's uh, kind of surreal, you know. Um kind of like living out a dream, you know, when I was in high school, uh, I was, you know, two career paths, I either wanted to be an FBI agent or I wanted to be a football coach, so, uh, you know, fortunate to, to get to do one of the two things that, that I wanted to do growing up, but, yeah, man, fortunate to, you know, play at Homer High School and the Coach Bowden and had a lot of great guys over there, and uh, when you're throwing it to guys like LaRon Bird and Ivory Washington and you get to hand the ball off to, you know, guys like Alfred Blue and Josh Stiles, you know, it makes you look good, so... Just uh, just just fortunate to get to play around those guys and, and be in that program. You know, if you ask somebody in, in Louisiana about football, you know, uh, Hornville is definitely one of the premier programs in the state from facilities, you know, to wins and losses, the state championship appearances and all, you know, all of those accolades that come with it. So just fortunate to be a part of that. And, you know, uh, fortunate to get a scholarship to play quarterback at Southeastern. Uh, I told the guys the other day they wanted to know what I paid to go to school. You know, I told twenty dollars a year for a parking pass. <laughs> so, uh, you know, and, and be around some great guys. You know, Tommy Condell was the office coordinator there. He's he's in the CFL. He's a coordinator in the CFL now. And Arthur Selter was there. He uh, his daddy was coach for the Colts, and he played he played quarterback at Hofstra. And then Coach Rudolph now, um, ULM. He's been with um, in the Canadian Football League with Coach Condell. And then now he's at he's a you know uh, offensive line coach at the University of Ohio, uh, Coach Ron Roberts who's the defense coordinator at Baylor right now for Dave Aranda. So yeah, man, just, just Greg Stevens was there. Uh, he was the coordinator at Utah State and Delta State before he came to us. So just getting getting to learn from a lot of good minds, and you know pull certain things from this one and that one and kind of make it my own and uh, you know mold it to, to to our kids and what works for us. So uh, yeah, man, very fortunate for the opportunity. You know, Miss Chairman, Coach Kyle gave me to uh to lead lead the uh, solid football program. I want to mention our again our guest today is uh, Brian B J Young. They call him B J Young out of Hanville, Louisiana. Played at Southeastern quarterback and now the head coach at South Lafouche, the Tarpons. And you know, famous people have come out of South Lafouche. A uh, lot of history there. 1971 state champs. 1977 state champs. Uh, a coastal town that is compromised is, is, is made up of cutoff La Rose, Galliano, Golden Meadow, and back in the day, uh, you know the the towns merged. It used to be a Golden Meadow High School, La Rose High School. They merged to to form South Lafouche, and there there was a lot of great players come out of there. We're going to talk about some of them later, but um, coach, you know, talk about speaking of Alfred Blue before we get into South Lafouche. One of the great running backs at LSU that, that had to share the ball with three other NFL running backs at LSU. And Alfred Blue never complained. He he wasn't drafted. He goes in the NFL, plays five years. And what is, what's he doing now? Didn't he go to Jacksonville from Houston? Now, you know, I'm not really sure. Blue uh, Blue was a freshman when I was a senior. Um, but I never got as close to him as uh, – as some of the other guys, you know, but, uh, you know, like I, I'm sure he's doing great. You know, I, I, uh, I know coming up, there was nothing but great things said about him. And then obviously 
you know, after I graduated, he kind of led that program for three years and, you know, went to LSU, like you said, split carries with two other NFL running backs, you know, and then he goes to Houston and, you know, he's running the ball for Houston on, on TV um, in the National Football League. So, uh, you know, that kid, obviously, he's putting in the work and he deserves everything that, that he's got. And, uh, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure Blue is doing real well. You know, you think of running backs at Hanville. Darius Renaud was a great one at West Virginia. That was a two back-to-back great running back. Darius Renaud and Alfred Blue. Yeah, and Puka Williams. Puka Williams, man. I mean, those are three of the best to come out of Louisiana in the last 20 years. And Puka will be in the NFL draft. He uh, foregoing his senior year at Kansas. And I think somebody's going to get a steal when they draft Puka in the NFL. He's he's work done part two, I think, Brian. Oh, man, let me tell you, I uh... – when it was in the dome, I told I was coaching at EA and I told all them guys, we got to go watch him. And uh, they're like, he's that good, huh? I said, man, I just seen him on YouTube and <laughs> watching on the internet because, you know, we were busy on Friday nights too. But I said, this this, this dude's a real deal. You know, I, I, the stuff he was doing, um, we got bumped out the playoffs and I went and watched him play Covington. And, I mean, the, the stuff he was doing, I've never seen that before. I mean, he, just explosive, man. Uh, yeah, I think you're right, Lee. I think whoever drafts him in the NFL will get a steal. He can do so much damage, uh, special teams. He can run up the middle. He's only 175, but he plays like he's 290. We're going to take a Absolutely. break. When we come back, we're going to have more. Brian B.J. Young, the head football coach at South Lafouche High School. We're going to talk about the Tarpons, some of their players this coming season, some of the guys that graduated in 221. In the history of the school, I, I'm actually – I know Bob Brunet that played for South Lafouche, played for the Redskins once upon a time for the legendary late coach Allen – and played in a Super Bowl for the Redskins, Bob Brunet. And I'm going to mention others as we go on. Bobby Abear, quarterback for the Saints. Ed Archeron, the head football coach at LSU, was on a state championship team uh, for South Lafouche. We'll be right back. Listen, whatever you're driving right now, Tommy Harvey wants it. Bring it in to Harvey Subaru, Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City, or John Harvey Toyota. They're paying big bucks for all trades right now. They'll cut you a check right there. Tell them Lee sent you. Welcome back. You listen to the Sports Scouting Report. Our guest today, proud to say, is uh, B.J. Young, Brian Young, the head football coach at South Lafouche High School, and the Tarpons. They got a great team coming up. Speaking of some of the great names that come out of South Lafouche, Gil Mathern played at ULM, was, a, was an all-conference lineman at Northeast. It's now called ULM D-Tackle. Gil Mathern, Bobby Abier, Ed Orgeron, Eric Griffin, and Ryan Thomasy were two offensive linemen at LSU. Sammy Mathern played 14 years in the Canadian Football League as a safety. Uh, we can go on and on. Bob Brene was a great running back for nine or ten years for the Redskins and played in the Super Bowl as a starting running back. Uh, but the tradition at South Lafouche, Coach Young, is, is very strong. And, and I like that, that before we get to the senior class coming up, the 221 class for uh, South Lafouche, you had some guys that you, you coached your first year. Guys I want to mention, not so much recruits, but one guy, Kendall Walker, signed with Arkansas Monticello. I think Kendall's D1, Coach. And, yeah, man, Kendall was a great player for us. You know, he kind of anchored that, that off of the line and uh, was a leader, you know, on and off the field. You know, I know when we got shut down for those few weeks, uh, Kendall, uh, well, well, you know, he was hurt, man. It hurt him because he cared a lot about, about the guys on the team. He cared a lot about our team. But, uh, man, great player, good kid to be around on and off the field. Um, took care of his business in the classroom. Uh, just a real student of the game, and we were fortunate, you know, to have him a part of our program, and I was fortunate to have him on our team from, from our first year there. He was on the cover of our magazine, and people said, Lee, why'd you put him on the cover? I'm like, he's one of the best offensive linemen that I saw in 219 play, 6'4", 275, with great feet, high effort. I think he's got a shot to be a next-level guy when he leaves Arkansas Monticello. I thought he was a Division One signing. They got a steal at Arkansas Monticello. There was Nathan Oquan, um, Sidney Bruce, Jesse Torres, uh, Joseph Pierce, Ethan Abair are some seniors. What about this small senior group, Coach, that you inherited that was a small group but a very tough group? Yeah, man, look, you know, all of those names, man, it brings a smile to my face because I was all kids that – uh. You know, they, they bought in from day one, you know, and sometimes when you get getting some new blood in, you could be a little skeptical. You know, you're yeah. excited, but you're skeptical, and you want to make sure, you know, as a, as a kid, it just, you, you know, you, you just want to make sure it, things are going to go right, and, and you're going to enjoy it, and, and, and you, you can mesh. And, 
man, those kids bought in from day one, never asked any questions. You know, whatever we needed as a coaching staff, they, they did. And, uh, like, you know, just like Kendall, man, real, 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 real fortunate to have those guys there my first year. Um, because, like, it's new for them, it was new for me too, you know. So um, having those guys around and, and being around those guys on a regular basis, you know, it, uh, it, it was a lot of fun that first year, you know. And you're talking about kids who went through a lot of adversity, you know. That's what I told mm-hmm. them when they left, that uh, it sucks, you know. And we, we faced a lot of adversity. We got, hit, we got bit by the COVID bug a lot. But, uh, you know, whatever kills you don't make you stronger. I mean, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So uh, all of those kids are going to be better because of it. And definitely. Uh, they definitely know how to face it first. I know another senior leader that you didn't mention was Braxton Petrie. Yes. Uh, he was yes. our running back. And uh, he, he's going to play at Louisiana College. He, okay. Man, poor kid. I, I don't know if i ever seen a kid work as hard as he does. And, uh, you know, 4.0 student. Uh, he wants to be a doctor one day, but, you know, got contact contact traced out of class twice. Mm. I believe he only played in three games his senior year, you know, and that's a kid that deserves deserves every game, you know, for the yeah. amount of work he puts in. And yeah. the, the, he, he didn't even have to – he played every snap, but he didn't even have to play. He just was, you know, so excited to be around the game and have fun, and um, he just so happened to be a stud. So, But it just it's tough for kids like that. You know, it, my heart goes out to him because, like I said, a kid like Braxton or that senior class, um, they, they deserve to play all their games, and um, it's just unfortunate the way it all played out. We're going to take a break, and uh, we'll be back with more. Coach, uh, before we take a break, the, the school was state champions in 1998 in basketball. 1998, Nikki Savoie played basketball at the school and was, ended up being a tight end, was a quarterback at the school. Nikki Savoie, who played for the Saints, 6'6", 260, actually became a pretty good quarterback in high school and ended up being a tight end at LSU. And all SEC tight end, Nikki Savoie from South Lafouche Tarpons. We'll be right back. Looking for a used car? Harvey Artos has three dealerships, which means three times the used vehicles. They've got everything from fuel-efficient compacts to luxury models, even hybrids, and certified pre-owned with a warranty. Check out John Harvey Toyota, Harvey Subaru, or Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City. Welcome back. You listen to Sports Scouting Report. Our guest today is B.J. Young, Brian Young, the head football coach at South Lafouche High School, Coach, uh, a lot of history there with the school. I know you've gotten to know the school, being that you're from Hanville, but, uh, you know, back in the day, it was they had a Golden Meadow High School. They had a La Rose. I'm sure everybody's told you the history. And then it the two schools uh, merged to, to form South Lafouche. Uh, y'all draw from Galliano, from Golden Meadow, from La Rose. Cutoff uh, is where the school's at. And um, so many great players to come out of there. But what do you think of the history? Before we talk about your upcoming seniors, but, what do you think about the history, looking at the at the walls of all the guys that have come there before you uh, being the coach? I mean, there's a lot of history there. Man, man, it's impressive. You know, there, there's guys that people know, you know, nationwide that, that came from South of Fush High School. You know, like you said, uh, just some big ones. You know, they got uh, Coach O from uh, for head coach of LSU Tigers and Bobby A. Bear, the Cajun Cannon, who uh, still, who's still on the radio with the Saints and stuff. So that's just some people that, I, that, that sticks out you know, to anybody in the nation. And it's just, it's crazy to, you know, it comes from a, uh, from a, from a small town. And, but, uh, the tradition, man, I told the kids that the tradition never graduates, you know, we got to get back to where they were. And, you know, people used to be, used to fear to come down here and, uh, and play football because they were so tough. And, mm-hmm. uh, man, we got, we got a lot of tough kids in our program right now, but, uh, yeah, man, uh, people are down here very prideful and, and they have a reason to be, you know, there's a lot of tradition and they want a lot of football games. And, um, you know, we're in eighth school. I mean, it's a good place to be. It's a, it's a beautiful campus. You know, on our campus, you get to see something. I don't know if you can see anywhere else. You know, there's boats that pass right in front of school. <laughs> That's crazy. You know? I so, like uh, that, yeah. Yeah, man, so unique. And, uh, you know, they embrace it. And, uh, like I said, they, they, they have a good reason to embrace it because it's a good place to be. And uh, they're very welcoming people, very friendly people. And uh, I, I have nothing bad to say. I, I enjoyed every every minute of it. Great stadium too. Great big stadium. Great lot of open land there. A lot of good good for uh, practicing and great great place to be. Great, like I said, great food. Uh, the food is the best in the world. Um, uh, uh, yeah. And then Vic King's another player that came out of South Lafouche. A running back was all conference twice at McNeese State. Vic King was a great one that came out of South Lafouche as a tarp. And uh, coach, there's a long line of players that are coming back to to be 
seniors, which is a good thing for you. Uh, a lot of lot of seniors coming back, a lot of guys that got experience, through, like you said, through a tough year. Um, I want to mention everyone real quick. I know we can't stop at each one. We can go back to talk about them. But let me – I'm going to go ahead and mention every name, and then me and you can go back around and talk about these kids. But Brody Petrie, a receiver, really fast kid. Cullen LeBlanc, good hands, feet. Connor Collins, another strong O lineman. Cullen LeBlanc is an O lineman. Jackson Bourgeois, strong D lineman. Cyrus Gilbo, good feet, defensive end. Gabriel Blackledge, another good D tackle, really quick. Uh, Elias, I hope I don't butcher this. Coronado, I believe. Um, Coronado. Coronado, D tackle, could play O line. Hunter Canley, what a tough kid, linebacker, high energy kid. Wes Alamon, linebacker, fullback. Devin Doucette. Really good player running back for you. Patrick Gisclair, a really good leader at quarterback. And Jackson Oten, uh, what a great tight end, a very athletic tight end. This is a very good group, Coach. And I'm not, not, I didn't mention every kid, but here's some of the top guys that they're coming back for this program. A lot to build around. Yeah, man, look, I'm, I'm super excited for uh, th- those kids coming back. I, I know when I got there, they, they – uh... A lot of people are talking about that junior class. And, uh, man, they're so competitive. Uh, they, they compete in the weight room. They compete on the field. Man, we got the GPA board. They compete for their GPA, you know, and that's just not – it don't happen everywhere, you know. Mm-hmm. But, uh, man, just just great kids. Um, you know, Jack Notan was an honorable mission all-state tight end. You know, as a first-team all-district kid. Uh, like you say, big kid, great hands, good feet, runs well, uh, does well in the run game. Uh, Brody Peach is kind of our midst of everything, you know. We, his brother was the running back. You know, brother gets contact trace, Brody plays running back, goes to the receiver, goes outside, moves to the slot. Man. Uh, yeah, man, just, just, just he's our, he's our, he's our uh, taste of hell, I guess. You know, I'll, I'll switch on the knife. And, um, you know, like you said, those two linemen coming back are really good. Um, bigger kids, uh, just hungry to be great, you know, just like sponges. Whatever you tell them, they try their hardest. And I can say that about all of our kids in our program. You know, what you tell them, they're they going to try – Try to, to their maximum capacity until yeah. they can't no more. And then, and, uh, and he, I'm just it's fortunate to be around kids like that because, like I say, look, there's a lot of places that have kids like that, and there's some that, you know, you, you fight that issue a little bit. But man, we just so fortunate to uh, to have those type of kids in our, in our program. And the two linebackers, I think, I think if you told the two linebackers to run into a wall, they'd ask you how many times. Yeah. You know, they just yeah. uh, man, really rough kids. And when you look at them, they pass the eye test. You know, West off. West is on the board in every one of our in every one of our categories. You know the power clean bench squat. You know just just great kids, really rough kids, not scared of contact. You know if you could draw a picture of two linebackers, that that's probably the, the picture you'd draw. <laughs> yeah, and then you got a quarterback. What is it like to have a quarterback coming back with experience like Patrick Gisclair? He's got experience coming back for you, oh. QB. Yeah, absolutely. You know. That's another one. Pat, Pat's full of questions, which is a good thing. You know, if we're in the film room, he's asking about this. So if we, I, I, I talk to him about this. He wants to know about, well, what if, the, you know, the defender shows this look, will he do this? Can I throw it here? Um, in practice, you know, 100%. So a uh, very smart kid. Uh, he, he does everything we ask him to do. Uh, he fought a little adversity last year, and then I think it made him, it made him stronger. And, uh, no, man, look, we, we're very fortunate to have Pat, you know, pulling the trigger for us and, and making, making some calls uh, in the huddle. And, look, we, we, uh, we put a lot on him, you know, in our passing game and the reads, and, mm-hmm. and he, he handles it well. We got reads in the run game. You know, if you're reading the RPO, if he's, you know, if he's doing this, you're doing that. If they're in this kind of coverage, he can break the route this way. If they roll it this way, he's going to break it off. And, man, he handles all of that in and and stride. And, uh, so, yeah, man, we're very fortunate to get a guy back. And I think anytime you get a quarterback back, that's you got to experience you're in, you're in pretty good shape. Coach, I want to mention this. What I like about this class, too, is there's a lot of linemen coming back. And it's always good to have these guys in the trenches when you're playing 4A ball or 3A ball or 5A ball. But having LeBlanc back, Collins, Bourgeois, Gilbo, Blackledge, and Elias, I mean, what a foundation of leaders. These guys are Absolutely. you know, all athletic linemen, too. Yeah, look, if you're not winning in the trenches, it doesn't matter what, what team you're running or what your skill players look like. If you if you can't win in the trenches, you'll be in for a long night. And that's a good core group that, that we have coming back. Uh, bigger kids, you know, they, they're bigger kids. I, they had a kid in the weight room the other day. He's not even a football player. And I asked him, I said, uh, big old boy, I said, you know, you play football. Well, I'm thinking about it, Coach, <laughs> but I, but I, uh, I, tra- I trawl with my dad a lot. I wow. said, well, that's it, you're on the team. <laughs> big old strong hands pull up and crab nothing. Shrimp nets, I need you, you know. 
What's going to happen? Um, is he going to come out? Yeah, he said he's coming out. He's, uh, right. he, uh, he said he, yeah, he was worried about his grades, but I, I, I made, you know, I promised him that uh, his grades won't slip and it's going to make him better. So, you know, being in the halls and got kids that's, you know, that's excited about it and people are having fun and, and they coming out, you know, so that's good, man. All hands on deck. But uh, it, it does help. Like you say, we got, we got some good trenches coming back. So uh, that definitely makes you sleep a little better at night. Well, I want to tell you this. When you meet somebody that graduated from South Lafourche, I don't care if it's the 40s, the 50s, or the 90s, they love the Tarpons. They still keep up with their school. I, I've got a friend, Gil Thurn, who owns a big company in Baton Rouge, GM Cable Contractors, and, you know, he played in the 70s. And he was an All-American D-tackle at Northeast. And, Coach, he loves his Tarpons, man. He all, every time I see him, well, how, does, how is South Lafourche doing, you know, and, and just keeps up with them. Everybody, this is a tight-knit group of people uh, from, as they say, down the bayou. And uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. I've, I've been there a few times, and I'm going to tell you, again, the food's the best. In the, I know Lafayette's got good food, but it's, it's, it's up there with Lafayette. I think the, the Homa area and, you know, round off, cut off, and like I said, La Rose and Galliano, Golden Meadow, you know, Lockport when you go further down the central. I know that's the rival, Coach, uh, Central Lafouche. <laughs> as they call it, central uh, in, in, in the South Lafouche area. But, uh, Coach, talk about, I heard through the grapevine, that you have maybe as many as 40 kids that might come out, new players. That's got me excited for high school football for your program. I, I've had a lot of parents tell me that you have been so passionate uh, talking to people. That, that, is that true? You have 30 to 40 new players that are going to be a part of the team. Yeah, you know, just real quick though, when you just to hit on that community, man, it, you can't ask for a better support group from this community. You know, if you they bleed blue, and there's no doubt about it. Um, so that 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 that's great to be a part of. And uh, yeah, man, it got got a good got a good bit of kids coming out. You know, there's uh, you can kind of feel like a, a little buzz in the air, um, some excitement, and uh, it, you know, at a high school, man, you you dealt the hand you dealt. So yeah. if uh, the the more kids you can get to play. Uh, and like I, like I told the coaches the other day, we had we were talking. It's not even about, you know, is he good? You know, it's just you're building young men. You know, so if they can be a part of something and learn some structure and discipline, and uh, you know, be a part of a team, man, that's stuff you carry throughout your whole life. Yeah. So yeah, you want good, you want good players and stuff like that. And, and but that comes. You know, I want I want kids to be a part of it because I, I honestly believe it'll help them. You know, as they go forward through, through, throughout their life. Just like when I talked to you the other day, uh, last year, I said, Coach, you remember me? He said, yeah, I remember you. You did a story on me. I said, oh, man, I appreciate you remembering me, you know. Cause, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. You yeah, said, you, yeah you, I remember. You, you remember uh, that. Yeah, man, I, I remember getting the email. Um, I was a freshman at Southeastern, and uh, it was a big old question there, and I just had to <laughs> answer all the questions <laughs> between classes and practice. And, uh, but, man, it, it's good, man. You know, I, I appreciate what you do for, these, for the kids in this state. And, uh, you know, if you believe it or not, it goes a long way. You know, every time they can get recognized or they got to do an interview or they answer a questionnaire, you know, or they, they get recognized, man, you can see the smile on their face. You know, they start blushing. It's, mm-hmm. it's stuff like this you know, on TV. So, man, you know, I, I know a lot, not just me, a lot a lot of people in this state, you know, appreciate what you do for these kids. Coach, we're going to come back with one more segment, and I want you to think of something. Tell me who you picked in the Final Four, truly who you picked when we come back. And did you watch Baylor Gonzaga the other day? I wanted to get your thoughts on that, and how you think Coach Selfo's doing at Southeastern, and what do you think of Ed Argeron at LSU? We'll be right back. We're listening to the Sports Scouting Report. Our guest today is Brian B.J. Young, the head football coach at South Lafouche High School, the Tarpons. We'll be right back. So, hey guys, just wanted to take a minute to tell you about Harvey Autos. If you need a new or used car, there's three great dealerships right here worth checking out. John Harvey Toyota, Harvey Subaru, and Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City. Low prices, honest people, tell them Lee sent you. Welcome back. You're listening to the Sports Scouting Report. Our guest today is B.J. Young, Brian Young, the quarterback. I want to say quarterback. He was a quarterback when we covered him at Hanville. It was a pretty good one. And in Southeastern, and now the head coach at South Lafouche High School. Coach? Did you have a chance to watch the Final Four, and did you watch the championship game against Gonzaga Baylor? I did. I watched the Final Four, and then um, I, I watched the championship game. I actually didn't even uh, I didn't even fill out a bracket. We were going to do it as a staff, and uh, it kind of just got away from us. But uh, I did. I, I sure did watch the game. I, I lost my bracket to a Southeastern student. 
uh, who's my editor's <laughs> brother. <laughs> and so there you I, go. my editor goes to Southeastern, Jace Lejeune. And while we're talking to Southeastern, what do you think of uh, 1AA football during the spring? Kind of crazy, huh? And what do you think Selfo's, how Selfo's doing? Man, I'm telling you, it's, uh, it, it, I tell you, it's fun to watch, you know, being an offensive guy, man. There's some points being scored. And, uh, look, I, I can I, – I think it's competitive across the board. There's no gimme weeks, and you know, there's no week where you say, "Oh, we we got this one." You know, they they down. Right. I think every team is a uh, man super competitive, and I think it's anybody's game on any given Saturday. And uh, man, I love what I see from Coach Selfo. Um, I went over there maybe a year and a half ago, and uh, I met him, and I sat down with Coach Stevens, talked some ball, and uh, man, he seemed like a great guy. And uh, yeah, man, I think the program's in great hands with Coach. You know what's crazy is that they have the quarterback right now, Cole Kelly, that transferred from Arkansas, played at Turlings Catholic. Uh, Cole six seven. He lost a lot of weight. He's about two forty now. He was about two sixty five. But man, he's got some zip, Brian, on the ball. He's got some pro talent. When he he's in the best shape I've ever seen him. And you know they beat a good Northwestern State team that really had as much talent as Southeastern. And I think they got a chance to beat McNeese coming up I really do I know McNeese had a big win over Nickel State uh you know on paper Nickel State probably has more talent than anybody but they're just trying to put it together like I said it's just a crazy year to try and play a season oh yeah man absolutely you know you fight another seven not just X's and O's and it's kind of out the ordinary you're not used to playing right now you used to, you know you're in spring ball and uh but no man that Cole Kelly he, he's special um, he can spin it. You know, if you blink, you'll miss it because he'll throw a, he'll throw a 15 yard or 20 yard out route to the field, and it'll get down a yeah. hurt. Yeah. Um, what do you think of the district, Coach Young, with South Lafouche? What do you think of the teams that you're playing now? And I mean, it's tough, man. There's some good teams in that district. Yeah, man. Look, I, I think it's like the Southland. <clears throat> you know, it's competitive every week. There's no there's no gimme games. Everybody's coached up and disciplined, and uh, everybody got great players. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a fun district to be in. I feel like, uh, you know, now we had the COVID and stuff, but I feel like fans show up to games. You know, there's every yeah. game's competitive. Uh, it's not, not not rival games, but every game kind of got some some rivalry type feel to it. You know, and then that's special. And uh, like I say, I feel like every Friday night is a is a good environment for our kids and and uh, uh you know the players in the district to, to play in, which is which is you know, and not every district has that privilege. And uh, yeah. you know, like I said, we, we're lucky to be in a district where it's. It's super competitive, and people care about football. Coach Young, do you did you make decision yet for spring about spring game against like within your team, or are you trying to schedule another team? Yeah, we we, we start May third, and then uh that Saturday we'll have an inter squad scrimmage. Okay, and then the next Saturday I believe maybe the fifteenth is uh we're going to spring game against Hornville at Hornville. Whoa, you Saturday. talking about your alma mater? You going against Hornville? <laughs> Yeah, man, that's my guy over there. Daniel Lucas, my guy. And, oh, uh, Daniel's kinda, a great guy. Yeah, man, we linked up. And, Wait a minute. You uh, were yeah, at Woodlawn with him, or you were an assistant at yeah. Woodlawn with Daniel. Yeah. That's right. Yep, Daniel brought me over on his staff when he uh, his first year at Woodlawn. That's correct. And uh, he's a Destrahan guy, right? He's from Destrahan. Yeah, man, he's a Destrahan guy. I feel bad for him. He's, <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's got a rival within a rival uh, coaching at Hanville, but what a great place. I mean, I really believe South Lafouche – has the energy once it starts to be like a Hanville because it reminds me of the same type of area, of the same type of people that are just really into football. Yeah, man, two tight knit communities. You know, Hanville gets behind their guys, and there's tailgating. And uh, I mean, you show up to Hanville on a Friday night, that it's going to be flat full. You know, and it's the same thing about Salafus. You know, these people bleed blue, and the tight knit community. Yeah, you're you're right, Leah. It reminds me a lot about uh. A lot about Hornville. There's a lot, a lot of similarities. I've got to ask you this before we go. As a coach, as a young coach in your early 30s, and uh, by the way, I saw that you have two young boys, man. God bless you. you got a young family and great. You stay busy. You probably stay really busy, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, that's right. You know, you got your experience at East Ascension for, as an offensive coordinator. Great job over there. And then Woodlawn, you were at Woodlawn for a while. You learned at Southeastern when you were a quarterback. What's your philosophy with high school football? Because, you know, when you were playing high school ball, we were just starting to see the spread at Hanville. Um, and then yeah, look, and, and now you got, you know, you got five wide, you got four wide, you got the power eye, you got the single back. What Are you looking at your, your personnel, or are you looking to try and put in a system long term, or, or would you like to go to a certain system eventually? Yeah, we, we spread, you know, offensively, spread defensively. Uh, Coach, Coach Will Bruce does a great job, and he mixes it up a lot. I got a lot of – 
a lot of, a lot of pressures, different blitzes, uh, different games to play with you up front. So uh, he does a great job with our defense. Uh, offensively, man, we spread. You know, now with that being said, like you say, based on the personnel that we get in a year in and year out basis, may, maybe a little bit more 11 personnel, maybe a little more run oriented. Um, got some guys who can make some plays, some more quick game, maybe some some screens to the outside. And uh, so it's a system we have, but but it's, if it makes any sense, it's molded kind of to the personnel that we'll have on a year in and year out basis. Um, I guess based on what what we'll be doing out of, out of the set. Yeah, it's always multiple anyway, right, Coach? I mean, you're going to have a power eye on the goal line. You're not going to be spread on goal line. Um, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, we got the ability to go in the center and, uh, you know, give a fullback dive or sneak the ball with the quarterback, or if we're taking the knee, we'll go under. So, yeah, I mean, based on your scenarios, um, I mean, look, I feel like you got to have that in because the second you don't, um, a situation is going to pop up and you're not going to have it in your wish you did. Coach, one final thing. Ed Argeron, who played at South Lafouche, have you had a chance to – I mean, no college coaches can't go to high schools right now because of COVID, which I hope is lifted soon. I know it's June maybe, but I hope they lift it in May somehow. But um, have you had a chance to talk to Coach Ed over the phone since you've been over there? I have, man. He called me uh, the day before we played South Terrebonne and uh, to congratulate me and, uh, say, you know, wish me the best of luck. And uh, he actually told the story uh, – about about him playing the year they won a the state championship. Um, South Terrebonne actually beat him, and he was just saying, "Man, so it's a scrappy bunch, you know." And uh, but you take it to him, and so yeah, man, Coach O, you know, and look, that's a you talk about busy now. <laughs> yeah, that dude, that dude got a lot of stuff going on, you know, and he still found time to, uh, you know, take a second and, and, and call call me and uh, just wish me the best, and so that uh, it means a lot, you know. Well, hopefully once this COVID's lifted and people can go to schools, colleges can come to schools, hopefully it's in May. I know say, they said June. You can get to see Ed Argeron and all these other colleges like Rebo from Nickel State and, you know, the coach is your coach. Uh, not your coach, but your old high school South – your old college Southeastern uh, coach who come by, Frank Selfo, can get a chance to come by as well, all the colleges statewide. Uh, Brian, you're doing a good job, man, and I love your – your swagger right now, you bring a lot of energy. Um, I think they did a great job hiring you at South Lafouche. I think you're putting in everything you have. And uh, I can only see good things this coming year. You got some great kids. And I wish you the best of luck, man. And obviously, I'm a big fan because I watched you when you were in high school at Honville. Well, look, man, I, yeah, like I said, man, I appreciate you uh, reaching out to me and doing uh, the, the podcast and uh, put, putting our guys on the map and putting our school on the map, man. I, I really do appreciate it. Don't hang up. Coach Young, well, I'm going to end the show. Everybody go to LAFootballMagazine.com. We have a story on Dakotas Crawford, one of the greatest names ever from Green Oaks and Shreveport. He's committed to LSU. He's a receiver, a phenomenal player. He's up there with Mo Claiborne in talent. Might have more talent than Mo Claiborne. Morris Claiborne, remember, won the uh, Thorpe Award at LSU as a DB. Uh, but Dakotas Crawford, uh, Jace Lejeune interviews him and also uh, Citizen, Trevante Citizen, one of the top running backs in the country from Lake Charles College Prep. We did an article on him, and we're doing one on Moss, the running back from Estruma. Coach, get this. There are 12 Division I running backs so far in Louisiana for the class of 222. 12 D1 running backs. Man, that's crazy, huh? A lot of talent. A lot of talent in this state. Always going to be talent. Never believe it when you say there's no talent in Louisiana. That's never. There's just more talent some years. Uh, but we're going to yeah, right. Uh, see everybody on. We hope everybody enjoyed the show. We'll see everyone. Thanks for listening to the Sports Scouting Report podcast with Lee Brookings.